Welcome to Bear Shear Vestige in the bottom right corner of the map. We have the Blue Terran from CM Storm. It is Pulse. P-O-L-T. And the top left corner of the map, we have from Team Liquid, the Home Story Cup 7 and Assembly Champion, Anastasia. Day 9 is poking me with his thunder stick. Yeah. <laughs> He's poking both Ow. of us with our punch. Sean! <laughs> I'm trying to work here, Sean. Sorry. <laughs> Save this for later. We can do this later. Are these guys not doing a great job? <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Sean and Mike, or uh, sorry, Husky and Day9 will be casting later today. We're all very excited about that. Heck yeah, man. We have a surprise for a lot of the people out there watching. Right before the finals, we do have something planned, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but until then, we're still tied and entrenched in this great TVT series between CM Stone Pole and Liquid Tasia. Pole is up two to one, so if you're just joining us on the stream from all over the world, you're coming at a good time because now everything is on the line for Tasia. He has to win. And now, what do we see in the opening developments of this game, Creator? It's gas first against the standard barracks, uh, barracks refinery. Very, very similar openings that we're used to. One player deciding to get a lot of minerals ASAP. The other player trying to get tech out ASAP. This works out pretty standard. Normally, the Tekken player is able to get a couple of kills, maybe one or two SCVs, and really tie things up. But the fact of the matter is, you do normally have to get some sort of kills, some sort of economic uh, advantage out of this, or at least uh, stop your opponent from getting that economic advantage in order for this to work out correct. And uh, we'll see how that ends up panning into everything because that, that has been uh, something that's really important because as much as these guys have been at each other's throats in their early game, it's still been an economic-focused series. Tasia did manage to do a very aggressive Banshee opening game two on Newkirk and was able to follow up with lots of drops, pokes here and there, and get an insurmountable advantage. But other than that one blip in Pult's radar, he's been sharp to defend almost everything that Tasia's been throwing at him. Yeah, I mean... Uh, that's what, sh well, that's what we can expect from these players too. I mean, you have to know the capabilities of your opponents, and you know, Tasia is, I would say, the opponent or the player more to take those risks to say, okay, I'm going to say all the builds that my opponent probably is not going to do. Command center first, really fast, uh, Ravens, really fast. I don't know, Vikings, things like that, and say, okay, what can I do to really punish and cut corners so that I can get ahead. But realistically, in this series, both players have been doing that quite a bit. That's kind of the mind game that comes with TBT, as both of you have the same amount of capabilities. You really have to gauge what you guys are capable of and what you have to defend against to really be uh, successful in this matchup. Right, and uh, both of them have seen these each other's builds, at least what they're doing, and so they're they're probably very well well aware of it. It's very standard. Again, another Banshee opening. But who's going to be more effective this time, Greetorp? Tasia has had effective Banshees and not effective Banshees. Every time I feel like Pole has opened with Banshees, he's been particularly effective. Yeah. Um, other than the one blip into the the uh, the, the Widow Mine on Newkirk. Um, and I feel like Pulse overall has demonstrated better control with his air units, at least in the early game. I do feel like Pult should be the one to, to, to get things done a little bit better. Just overall, if I give it 100 games, I think Pult will come out on top. Although, obviously, we saw in game number two, Newkirk City, um, Tasia has the capabilities to really come back with that bench. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think at, at this level of play, every single pro gamer should be able to control this really, really nicely to get those type of banshees. But it really comes down to the fence, the defense. How comprehensive are both of these players? That's the real question we have to ask. Very thorough. Ravens on the way. Widow minds for each player to see if they can potentially catch the Banshee or lure them into a trap. The cloak immediately goes off. Still about 20 seconds away from Pult being able to finish his uh, Raven. And in that regard, he's going to use a scan oh. and try to push it off. But until then, he buys time for his Raven to come out. Meanwhile. Uh, Pult's Banshee is also harassing, getting a kill off, but Tasia is also trying to defend with his own oh, wow. Raven using a turret his own. Yeah, auto turret gets thrown down immediately, just mitigating a lot of the damage that it could do. I think Tasia realizes, hey, I've done so much damage with this Banshee, this is the only thing uh, that, that Pult can really do to get back economically. Let me go ahead and just throw down that auto turret, be really, really safe, realize that I can't use anything of value a little bit later on, but 
I will be able to get the economic advantage, so it doesn't matter. Oh, man. Tasia does try play with a little bit of fire. He's out of cloak. Uh, it doesn't really matter because the Raven can see it, but still trying to pick a fight. Hypothetically, if you had perfect micro, Banshees can kite Marines indefinitely. Mm -hmm. But it's a little tricky because even the slightest delay in your kite can end up ta you taking damage. Banshees high five <laughs> as they do pass Air by five. each other. Uh, both of them don't really have the capabilities of doing any more pressure with the Vikings, of course. The Ravens out. It really shuts down a lot of the pressure. So they do have a time clock on them. It's not like they have forever to, to kite those Marines, as you were saying. Uh, but yes, I, I mean, you will see the best, the best players in the world be able to get, as we saw, 20 kills. Uh, and a lot of those are Marine kills most of the time, being able to just make sure they take minimal, minimal damage while they're doing that. Yeah, and uh, now Tasia has been able to get the better exchange like you were benching, and as a result, enjoys everything just a little bit quicker. The mm -hmm. command center got a little bit faster. The Raven was able to do or get out a little bit faster and protect his economy. And as a result, that's carried over to a slight, but still a, a lead nonetheless, but a very, very slight lead. 35 to 31 workers. Yeah, you have to realize, once you see that a lot of SCVs or Marines are killed, you're instantly thinking, my opponent has no capabilities of putting on any pressure. They just don't have the material to do so or to really say that they can do so, right? Even if I don't make units and I killed a lot of stuff, your opponent thinks, well, they could have a lot more Marines than me. I have to play defensive. And that gives you the build just production structures or just expansions or a lot of SCVs super, super fast. That's a nice little way to get super far ahead when you go into that mid-game stage. That way you explode off of economy, able to take a lot of position, and from there, really take control of the game. Uh, and and Tej is still just trying to be as annoying as possible with that Banshee, but the Viking will discover it, so it'll be the last couple of seconds. Maybe pick up one more unit, but is not able to, and Polt has at least uh, taken that threat off the map while he controls the Watchtowers. Tasia does have a Widow Mine. Oh, and Polt's going to take some damage. It's not going to kill the Banshee. You need a little bit more, but 15 health, and that might have to force a recall back home as now Tasia is moving across the map with some Marines and tanks. Now, where will he go? On Belshire Vestige, there's a couple of spots that I have to mention that are worth talking about. Right over here, this is a place where you can defend very accurately. And of course, uh, or excuse me, you can be aggressive very accurately and, and start attacking a lot of production structures and also go into the natural really easily. Of course, dropping and elevating is one of the easiest things that you can do to really take advantage of bad positioning as a defensive Terran. You know, uh, Pulse, you know... Tasia, I, I didn't kind of actually notice it, but he actually added a lot of production early on, and he's not adding a, a third command center. I think Tasia wants to just go like a two-base hyper-aggression, almost an all-in-ish thing, but it's not really because you can always just drop the command center. But it, it's just a little different take while Polt's gone for a conventional third timing. And if he wants to really try to shove uh, to Polt kind of like off this map, he might have a small window. Depends on how Pult's able to handle the first push. And he's going to use a double secret missile on one of the tanks and try to disarm his opponent. And all of a sudden, Tasia's going to try to stim. Oh. See if he can get an early engagement and an opportunity. Tasia wants to end it early. And he's going to try to get ambush one of these tanks. And he does get it. A really tough position for Pult. Oh, yeah. The siege tanks will be able to push up. There's just so many medevacs over here. Tasia has a lot of units as well. Oh, the siege tank oh, is going to be taken out. no. That was the only defensive option for Pult. Now, SEVs are going to be pulled. A lot of SEVs going down. Siege tank all the way in the back not able to really get into the fray killing a couple of marines over here but the siege tanks for have come and are oh, all the SUVs they're done they no, might not be able to repair the command center GG 